Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank 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 I'm going to turn to the word, uh, and uh, again, you, you know, I'm coming from Revelations chapter two. Um, I don't speak a lot from Revelations, but when the Lord says to go to Revelations, you better go. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is a great, you know, some of it is difficult to understand, and some of it is regular difficult to understand the word of God because the word of God is not just any and none of the word of God is easy but revelations poses some challenges but some of it is not as challenging as people one minute pastor <laughs> all right she the host muted all of you including me uh but she gave me permission to unmute myself. So <laughs> I know when to shut up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, this, this second chapter uh, and, and, and in the series that's going to proceed from here, um, the Holy Spirit is revealing uh, many to the seven churches uh, and um, this first church that is being written to is the church of Ephesus. Um, I, uh, I do believe that this was being written to a literal church in a literal time who had literally come to a place where it was being assessed. But of course, everything in the Bible has present and future implications. So... Um, this this passage can be interpreted for us today uh, and for any time that 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 it fits the circumstances of of the of the contemporary church um we believe that probably timothy would have been the pastor of this church and so it is written and the angel of the church is who it's addressed to the angel of the church is the pastor of the church but the letter is for the entire congregation. And of course, you know, we make our distinction between the church and the congregation. Everybody who attends is in the congregation, but only the blood wash are in the church. Hallelujah. Uh, this is written to the entire congregation of the church of Ephesus under the pastorship of Timothy. Uh, and uh, at a time when Timothy would now be a little bit more mature pastor, uh, not the young Timothy that Paul had to exhort to not let people look down on his youth, but to be an example of the believers. But now he's stood that test. He's been an example of the believers and in word and conversation, etc. And he is now a senior pastor of, of, of First Church of God of Ephesus. Um, and uh, these churches, these seven churches, six of them will have will 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 be presented with what's positive and what's negative of them. Only one church, and I let you do the research, but it's right in your hometown. Only one church will not have a negative. All the other six will have positive and at least one negative, and. Um, the church at Ephesus uh, is, is a very strong church. So we're not talking about a church who has abandoned the word. We're not talking about a church who is, uh, uh, you know, really living, not living up to the standards of the Lord. We're talking to a, a pretty good, healthy church. And so even among a good, healthy church, a good, healthy group of Christians, we can still grow. We can still have a need to grow. And uh, so he talked about the positives, and, and one writer says, since he talked about the positives first, it probably means that he was more, the letter was more of an encouragement than it was a, a chastisement. So, so the encouragement is that here's all the good things you're doing, and you're doing them so well. Don't stop doing them. Keep doing them. And let me just 
look to a few of the things. I know your deeds. I think it's important for us to realize the God that we serve. The God that I serve isn't waiting for somebody's report about me. He's not waiting to, to hear second hand, third hand, or any other hand what is going on in my life. He is a present God. He knows presently. He is omnipotent and omnipresent. He is all powerful and he is everywhere at the same time. I, 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 when, when I think of these things, it makes me kind of wonder, Lord, why? Because you, I'm surely unworthy to be preaching any word Ab uh, about the church of F Ephesus. I am not worthy. And that's why very often, I didn't do it today, but very often when I start off, I have a prayer saying, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Because I know that the words of my mouth are a lot of hot air. But I'm asking the Lord to take this hot air and translate it so that by the time it gets to your ears, it's soothing or pricking whatever the Lord wants to do with it, but it's a word that comes from him that reaches you. It's not the eloquence of my speech. It's not my Bajan accent. It's not any of that stuff. Uh, but, but the Lord says, I know your deeds. High Street, the Lord knows the heart, the will, and the actions of High Street. And he is not guessing he came right up and said, I know your deeds. And let me show you how I know your deeds. Because I know that your deeds were deeds of hard work and perseverance. This church at Ephesus, Ephesus was not a lazy church. They have gone, they have gone through a lot of testing and a lot of persecu uh, persecution. And they have come a long way. And he says, I know that you've had hard work and perseverance because sometimes people don't want to give you credit for the fact that you came through. But we have come, you know, the songwriter says, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Saints, we got to not show off and pat ourselves on the back like, like we can count that uh, as though that is going to take us forever, but we also got to be thankful that we've come this far by faith. We've got to be thankful that the Lord has been with us. And with the Lord on our side, we can only conquer. We can say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, then where would we be? Uh, Moody used to say to the drunk in the street or the fallen person, but for the grace of God, there goes I. Uh, high street, but for the grace of God, we would not have a high street because he says, if you didn't do the right thing, I would remove the lampstand. Now I'm getting ahead of myself, but remember the angel is the pastor and the church is the lampstand. And if the pastor and the church don't want to do what the Lord says, he says, I'm telling you, you're doing a good work. I'm pleased with the work you're doing, but there's something I want you to focus on right now. And if you don't focus on it, and you continue that way, you wouldn't even exist anymore. Uh, and I always say High Street has a strong foundation. That this, is, this, is, this is a place that I'm proud to be associated with. High Street has had some great teaching. Can you imagine little old David from Barbados is preaching in the church where a great man like, like Horace W. Shepherd Sr was the pastor, was jumping all over the pulpit and, and, and carrying on, and, and little old David could stand up behind that same pulpit. It's not because of little old David, it's because of the great big Jehovah. Uh, he will put in place his people. And, and, and Horace W. Shepherd laid a foundation, among other people. I'm, I'm just, I, love, I like to give my props to the people that I know that I've been led by, uh, uh, but you know, you know all the ones who were leading a high street um, uh, and you know, following um, Pastor Shepherd, Bishop Granham, uh, took you even further. Uh, high street is, is not done. We, 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 the Lord is saying to you, high street, I know your hard work. High street, I know your perseverance. 
High Street, I know where you've been. I know what you've come through. And I know your heart. So High Street, I believe Ephesus is a good church to be compared to. We, 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 can, we can feel pretty good that, 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 that the Lord today is telling us, I know your hard work. I know your perseverance. I know that you don't stand for evil. I know you stand against the wrongdoing. I know you don't let spiritual wickedness in, to come and dwell in high places, not at high street. Uh, we will say, we will give them the hand and say, not in, the, not in this place, not up here. You can't bring that mess into high street. We, we, we don't let you come and preach false doctrine and, uh, as though we are just itching ears just to hear what somebody got to say. It says, well, you know, I was very impressed. It says, I know that false people have come around you and you did not fall for it, but you call them out as being for, false and you were right to do that. Amen. I am, I am pleased to know that we're associated with the strength of, of a church that's resilient. Uh, our membership numbers might not be the 300 plus or whatever we were ever in our heyday, so to speak, but I know the heart of High Street. I, I know that, that we want to serve God in the beauty of, hol of His holiness. I know that we are convicted that we have a role and a place in our community and in the extended community, we still want to win Germantown for the Lord. And if you have forgotten that, then let me hasten to the negative part. So the negative part says, there's one thing I want. What he's saying here is, is not that there's one thing that's horrible among you. There's one thing I want you to once again focus on. You, you used to focus on it, and it was that thing that got you going and you have stopped the, the, the firm focus of this thing. It says you've lost your first love. Just, let's think about that. The, the first love, when, when you first get saved, we didn't have to call you and remind you what time church was. Uh, we didn't have to tell you we we're on our way to pick you up. I heard stories. Now, if I get it wrong, correct me later. But, but I heard, so I think Mother Zaney or Alexander, whoever she was, took three different modes of, of, of uh, transportation to get from where she was, somewhere in West Philly, all the way up to Germantown. And, and, and this wasn't a young 20-some-year-old woman. This was a grown woman. And she, and, and she wasn't alone. I, the, see, your first love, when you, when you have that excitement about being in love, uh, with the Lord, you have that that fervor that says we can take the city, that we can take Germantown, that that we can take this this area. You know, we we, we get back to where you were when you first believed. And I want to say to us, to me, get back to where you were in in 2004 when we started the, the Pastor High Street. In, in 2004, we laid out a perimeter. And we went from Washington Lane on one side to Shelton on the other, to Chew on one side, to Germantown on the other. That was our perimeter. We were supposed to own this place. And I'm saying the Lord says, refocus. Get back to that first thing that drove you, that made you want to come to church, made you want to serve the Lord. You know, so many people want to relax because you, you know, time is going on and you just want to let down a little and you don't have that drive anymore. Well, refocus. Get back to the place where you were once when the Lord had called you with your first love. Your first love is to the Lord. Your first love is to the Holy Spirit. Your first love is to say yes to his will. Your first love is not to worry. You know, what, what we used to do was move and then and then worry about how we're going to get there. Now, we worry about how we're going to move. And, and God is not asking us to worry about how you're going to move. If God says move, you're supposed to move. Start moving. Put one foot forward, and, and don't worry about the second foot. Put your back first. 
You know if you get your bad foot first, your good foot is going to follow. So, so put forward what the energy and the focus. Don't, don't, don't say I'm too old. Don't say, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Remember, you used to always say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But now you're getting older. You say, well, I, 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 I can't. Uh, I'm too old. Or you say, I've done it all before. So I know I did my best, and now I can just take a rest. Uh, that's not what God is calling us to do. Germantown is still lost. Germantown still needs to hear from about Christ. Germantown still needs to see a light shining, a beacon on High Street. Germantown still needs to hear the shots from the saints of God that, that we are praising God in the midst of all of this. Don't worry about COVID-19. Uh, you know, if I, if I worried about it, I wouldn't even be here. Uh, or, or maybe if I worried about it, I wouldn't even come back, one or the other. But I can tell you that, that I'm not worried about it. You know, I, 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 the Lord made a wonderful and miraculous way. Uh, there, there were, there were, I give up on being here. I would confess. I totally gave up. I said, Lord, I, you know, the Lord gave me a sound that gave me peace that says, um, I am the Lord's I know. And I would say, and it, that sound writer was saying, whether I live or die, wake or sleep, whatever, I'm the Lord's. And I say, whether I get to go home to be there for my moms or not, I am the Lord's. He is my peace. Uh, and, uh, but, but that's the thing. We, we get to a place sometimes where we give up. I told my sister, stop making any efforts to get me home. I am done. I'm staying here and I'm going to do the Zoom thing. And lo and behold, in the midnight hour, at the 11th hour, my name got on a list that was already full. And, my, uh, and a flight opened up for two that was already full. And we got on a plane that was already full. And we got to an island that was not opening to take anybody in. And we got in and got through the process. And we were supposed to go to a place where nobody would know where you are. Uh, and and do, would you believe the Lord sent a, a member of the Church of God at a church that I know, I know all the churches here, but I don't know this young lady, uh, and the Lord put us in her group. She even turned to me at one time and said, you're not supposed to be in my group, but that's okay, I'll take care of you. Uh, and, and we spoke and we shared, don't you know, that when we told her that we want, we're here because we want to attend my mom's funeral, she says, okay, I'm going to make sure that you get to go home. Just assure me that you could go to a private place in the home. Uh, and then at the end, when they were still shuttling us over to a place that was controlled by the government, she came and pulled me out of that line a second time and said, no, you're not going there. You are going home. But if you don't think that God is a present help, I can tell you he's a present help. Because then the government took a bus that they commandeered and, and drove by military personnel, drove us right to our door. I mean, only God can do that. And this happened at 2 o'clock in the morning. We landed at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and were tested and were, had to wait for results and had to do everything in, according to the, the, to the protocol. And it took till two in the morning for us to get released. But thanks be to God, we were released to go home. And, and, and I was able to do what my mom wanted. Uh, my mom, several years ago, I mean, I don't remember how long ago, but it is before I was pastor. So it's more than 15 years ago, 16 years ago. My mom wrote out her service for her funeral, something that you know I will never do. So as Sister Jean is not on the line today, she's having technical issues, but she knows that I won't be writing out anything. Plus I'm gonna be here for 120 years. So who am I gonna write it to anyhow? And the people I write it to will be gone. So I don't have to worry about that. But, but, but my mom 
wrote my name down as the person that she wanted to do her eulogy. And, and, and you know, I, I thank God that I was able to. But, but my whole point of all of this is that God says, uh, I am there for you. And, and, and I want this church at Ephesus to be strong. And I want this church at Ephesus to, to be a model church. So, so I am going to, I'm telling you, get back to the place where you can trust me, where even when you can't trace me, that, that, you, can, that you can believe my promises and, and that you can believe my, 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 my plan that I have, that I have a plan for you. And you can believe that I have the power to make my promises come into my plan so that my promises and my plan are really the same. Because if I promise you, it is my plan. And if it's my plan, it's going to happen. God doesn't wait, you know, God didn't wait to get me on the list. God already knew that I was on the list. I'm the one who only realized I got on the list after I was on the list. But God knew that he was going to use people. And, and I can't name the names because it has to remain secret, so I got to take it to my death. But there's some wonderful people who did some wonderful things, and, and praise the Lord, I'm here. Uh, God is going to do the same thing for us at High Street. We're not done. Anybody who says High Street is done, let them know that, get, tell them that Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. They, they, that, that's just a trick of the enemy to make you think that we're done, that we're too old, and now COVID is on us. We're not going to open the doors again, and, and you're never going to see High Street again, and, and all that stuff. And, you know, the, the, the numbers were going down. Now, numbers I heard, 60,000 a day getting getting COVID, but that's all right. God always has a remnant. And I want you to know High Street, we are the remnant of the church. If there's, if there's going to be one church left, it's going to be High Street. So I am not worried about any other street. I'm telling you, High Street, all we got to do is get back to our first love. Get back to the place where we will do things that are impossible because God can take the impossible and make it possible. That's really what I'm trying to say. It, it, he, he does it and he does it over and over. And you know, sometimes we say, won't he do it? You know, he will do it. it, it the um, Thai tribute says, if he did it before, he can do it again. And I know my God has done it and more before, so he can do it again. I, I am so happy and and please, that our God is able and willing, and and there's no end to His giving. Uh, so, High Street, I want to encourage you that that we have to get back to the place where we first believed. It, that could be the place where you believed initially in getting saved, or it can be the first place, the time when you believed that we were going to do great and wonderful things. Whatever it is, get back to that first love, where you trusted God, you didn't wait for anybody to tell you anything. If God said it, you were doing it. If God, if God challenged you, you, you said yes. You, you, you were like Isaiah. You, who will go? Me. First hand up. My hand up. We, we were energized. We were motivated. We were ready to go. And I'm saying, High Street, get back on that energy trail. Get energized. Get motivated. Get ready to go. Get ready to do what the Lord says. Don't hold back. Uh, before I close, I know many of us, many of us were challenged through our poor days to be obedient to God. I know this. Everybody is glad they're muted because I know everybody's gonna be quiet now, even if we weren't muted. But we were challenged, and we gave out of our lack, out of our want. We gave financially. I'm talking about. But then the Lord blesses us and we get a little better and we decide, well, you know, I, I was just speaking to somebody recently and I was so appalled when I heard that a pastor says that he or she, so that you don't know who I'm talking about, could not pay a tithe and a mortgage at the same time. I hope you're listening. A pastor openly says that he or she could not pay a tithe and a mortgage at the same time. So I assume that they paid the tithe, 
only to find out that they paid the mortgage because they were speaking to the church. What a shame. What a shame. You can afford to pay a tithe and a mortgage. Maybe God didn't tell you to get that mortgage, so that's why you can't afford to pay a tithe and a mortgage because instead of trusting God's leading, you look at somebody else's and you went and get a house that you couldn't afford, so now you can't pay a tithe and a mortgage. But let me tell you, you can pay a tithe and a mortgage because when God puts you in a, in a mortgage, he already promised to pay your mortgage. I, I don't have to worry. I got a mortgage. Some of you don't have no more mortgage. Hallelujah. I still got one, but I still tithe. I pay a tithe and a mortgage at the same time. And not because I'm rich, because you, cause rich, there's got a lot of rich people who don't give a penny to the Lord. Because remember the story, the woman with the widow's might was given a whole lot more than the rich people who were coming in showing off that they were given something. Uh, the, the reason I can pay a tithe and a mortgage is because I believe God. And I'm not getting away from what I believe. When I first believed, I believed that it was important for me to give my talent, my time, and my all. And so I'm giving him my talent, I'm giving him my time, and I'm giving him my money. Uh, all of you who don't want to give, that's fine with me. But I am thanking you. I'm thanking God because he has blessed me. I have paid mortgages over the years, and I, now I'm looking at less than 10 years left. Hallelujah. I'm praising the Lord that I will soon join those who don't have a mortgage because in, in due season, I won't have a mortgage either. Hallelujah. But you don't have a mortgage because you paid your tithe, not because you don't have a tithe because you pay your mortgage. I think people get things backward. That's why God says, I know this church, and I know this church did not follow the Nicolaitans who came with a whole lot of nonsense teaching stuff that was not of the Lord. I know that this church persevered persecution, but stuck with the, the, with the word of God and I, and I have brought you this far. So all I'm telling you church is get back to that first love, get back to that place where you first believe. Uh, as I close, I, rem I, don't, I don't have this on my YouTube today, but um, um, Andre Crutch used to say, take me back to the place where I first believed. Take me back. Because he understood that, that that was the best of times. I remember when I was first saved. Now, I was only seven years old. But let me tell you, I was seven and I lived in a childlike salvation till I was 14. When I believe I got the full anointing and uh, enrolling of the Holy Spirit in my life. And from 40, I could just see how I was at 14. There was nothing that could stop me from going for the Lord. There was nothing that would stop me from serving the Lord. Uh, you know, I do silly things like telling my, my girlfriend that God came before her. But she was stupid enough to marry me anyhow. Praise the Lord. So... God came first, and then he says, that's all right. I will send you a wife. God came first, he says, that's all right. I will send you an education. God came first, he says, that's all right. I will send you the best church in Philadelphia, High Street Church of God. I wouldn't trade High Street for any street, maybe an avenue, but no other streets. I hope you get that. But praise the Lord for High Street. Amen. So you can unmute everybody, Sister Poole. <clears throat> I thank the Lord for this day. I thank the Lord for his word. And I pray that you will get back to the a place where you are on fire for the Lord, where the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding and directing, and you are just following. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 Thank you for the word. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful word. Thank you, Lord. We are going to have our communion service today. And um, since I'm here with my, my new brother, because I can't call him brother-in-law anymore, my mom changed him from uh, to, to 
have to say my brother now, not my brother-in-law, but you know who I'm referring to, um, Pastor John Carrington, and I'm going to ask him to lead us in our communion service at this time. Uh, we, we have to unmute Brother JC. Amen. You're free. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dave. Good morning to the Saints at High Street. Good morning. Yeah. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just, I just want to share with you on a historical perspective of the co of the covenant. If you know anything about Jewish tradition. The cup is one of the most significant in Jewish traditions, it's often used in many a ceremony. The one I want to put our focus on this morning is the, the ceremony of the marriage. In Jewish tradition, the cup is offered by the father of the bride, you know, the father of the groom, to the groom. To offer to his bride. If you accept the cup, there will be a marriage. Get the cup, there will be more negotiation. When Jesus asked, when Jesus asked the disciples to come to the table and to partake in the Passover, I don't know if they were aware that he was going to institute the Lord's Supper. I don't know if they were aware of how things have changed for them and for the focus and the, the mindset that they had for it. But I know that they were aware of the significance of the cup in Jewish tradition. Mm -hmm. And so when he took the bread and he broke it and he offered it to them as a symbol of his body broken for them, I'm not sure that they were fully aware of its significance. I think a lot of that happened, a lot of its significance dawned on them after the resurrection. But I don't think at that table that they were fully aware of the significance of the breaking of that whole loaf and sharing it around the table. Mm -hmm. I think they knew of the significance of the cup, but I don't think they knew of the perspective that he would bring to the cup that is at the table. Mm -hmm. Well, we are in a better position today because we know both the significance of both the bread and the cup. Mm -hmm. It's not new to us. This is something that we have been doing. But this is what I want to say to us. Every time we take up the cup and we break the bread, mm -hmm. we don't simply remember the Lord's death until he comes. Mm -hmm. We remember that we are the bride expecting the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. We're the bride looking for the one who will consummate the marriage, the one who will bring the dawn of the glorious stage. FH could be the right word to use. Because he's the one who will bring with him when he comes again, mm -hmm. enter all the former things and a celebration of all the new things. And for certain, we can even beforehand, celebrate in this newness, this new perspective of both the cup and the bread. Mm -hmm. As the bride, we should be especially grateful that the bridegroom has left us with these tokens, these elements that we can celebrate our marriage our union as often as we do. So this morning, if you have with you your wafer, your your bread, whatever you can, I want us to go our heads for a word of prayer and then we're gonna party. Father, we give thanks and we bless you. Thank you. For these emblems, 
Yes. To defend the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you that we can continually learn from the example that he has set and continually grow in the way that he has set. Thank you this morning that as we eat, we partake, we do so, not only remembering his death until he comes, but also being aware that we are the bride expecting the return of the bride. We long for him. We long for his presence. We long for the sharing of his glory. So, Father, today we part it with grateful hearts. Thankful for what you did on Calvary. Thankful for the third day where he rose from the dead. Thankful for the time when he ascended to heaven. For the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. All the commandments he's left. But also very grateful that he will come again. Yeah. This oh, yes, he will. So bless this blade and bless this property. And may we do so to the honor and glory of your name. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 On the night, our Lord was prepared, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks and he said, This is my body that is broken for you. Uh -huh. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Lord. Thank you. Not the supper you gave night. Thank you. He so said, This is the New Testament in my blood that is shed for you. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. Yes. Let us partake of the cup. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. 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 To lift us up and encourage us. Yes. Strengthen us in the end of our life. May we be encouraged to continue to follow Christ even until He either calls us or till He returns. We pray this in His name and for His name's sake. Amen. 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 Amen.